Me Danks on lock. Yeah. They call me Danks on lock. Uh. Come on. Who stay twerking? 12 stay bumping. My flow is so hard you would have swore I was from Compton. Who stay twerking? Welcome back, everyone. It is your boy Crypto Danks back in the building. Let me turn the volume down a little bit. And we'll get this underway, and I'll introduce our guest of the day. Uh, let me close this little thing here, bring us over. Here we go. Mark, how are you? So we've got Mark from Ifani Sim Swaps. Um, they provide a Sim Swap service. Um, welcome, Mark. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much for having me on. Appreciate Absolutely. It. Yeah, of course. So the way. This all kind of went down and how we ended up here today. Um, and, you know, I saw and I have here, I pulled up some of the pages. Crypto Wendy, Crypto Casey, Charlie Shrem, Ben Armstrong, just to name a few. I see you guys all over their channels. They're promoting you like crazy. And it, honestly, it, it seems authentic. It doesn't just seem like... That's what was interesting to me about what you guys are offering is in, in the way that these um, 
you don't want to call them shillers, but they're promoting, you know, um, this is one thing that they've consistently over a long period of time promoted with a passion, it seems like. So I see, yeah, we started chatting. I just wanted to know more about what your project, not project, what your product is, does, you know, how, um, how it works, what is SIM swapping? Because a lot of people, they really don't have any idea what that is. You know what I mean? And, um, I decided to go live stream. I don't know how many viewers we're going to get, you know, but if anyone wants to ask questions, possibly we might get some questions and we can talk about that. But, um, I don't know if you want to start with your background and where you came from, how you got here, where, where you're at today, we can go wherever you want, start where you like. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll start with a little bit of background just so people can learn about me personally. And then I'll talk about where Fani was born from and why and, and, uh, and how we got here today. So uh, my name is Mark Kreitzman and I've been in tech since I was you know, 14 years old. And uh, I've, been in, I've been doing startups since around 2001. So if you use Microsoft's email, cloud email solution, I, I worked for the founders uh, at, at the company that uh, got acquired by Microsoft. And then I went on to a web security company and uh, we built a cloud-based web security company that was acquired by Cisco Systems. So if anyone's using the Cisco Systems web security, I was part of that as well. Uh, over the last like eight or nine years, I started to get into crypto and uh, was, was looking at projects that I could personally do. I happened to be, I, I moved from uh, East Bay of San Francisco down to Southern Arizona to be closer to my parents uh, during the COVID period. And I uh, was working with a couple friends on some different ideas for crypto startups out of Phoenix. And it just so happened that I was driving back to Southern Arizona and I got SIM swapped in the middle of the desert. Oh. And I was right in the middle of Phoenix and Tucson and I was talking to my father, telling him I was going to be there in about 45, 50 minutes. And my phone just went out. And then about 30 seconds later, I get a message saying no network detected. And I knew right at that moment what had happened. Really? And so he, I had been building. How, how did cyber you know? Right. Oh, OK. But it's your history, I guess, in cybersecurity. Yeah. So I knew when I get that message that there, this is this is not a, uh, you know, I'm out of range. This that's a message of like your mobile account's been moved, and um, and so I knew I you know I st I was still thinking like oh god I hope this didn't happen maybe it didn't happen I don't want to get too paranoid maybe I'll after a couple miles it'll kick in, um, but you know that's when you realize like you know there's no pay phones out there and so. It's like, do I want to go to a Walmart? Thir you know, I'd have to drive to a Walmart 30, 40 minutes away and then borrow somebody's phone and and try and call or to, or I just go direct to my parents. So I pulled up to the garage, Wi-Fi kicks in and six password resets went up my phone. And so this is uh -huh. 2018. And uh, and then I, I called the carrier and they thought I was the hacker. Oh. And, and then after about 10 minutes, I'm like, <laughs> I called you on my mobile phone. How's this even working? You confirmed with me that I got SIM swap. Somebody stole my mobile number. And he's like, oh, that's a good, that's a good question. And he looks and he says, after 61 minutes, they ported it back to your phone. And so at that point, like I couldn't sleep for six months because I was waking up at 3 a.m., 5 a.m., 7 a.m. And I'd look at my phone like, do I have an LTE signal? And I refused to use Wi-Fi during that period because I thought it would mask. You know, I'd wake up and I'm getting email. I'm getting sure. Twitter up. There. Oh, I've been mask. in that situation where, like, you're getting hacked. It's not pretty for sure. Oh, yeah. So so I had a, the, so the damage was already done. I already had PTSD. And the fact that they ported it back to my phone freaked me out even worse. <laughs> so what I did is I, I searched because I was like somebody had to solve this. So I found the only guy out of uh, in, in the U.S. that claimed that he had solved it, and I connected with him. And it turns out that he, at the time, was building a Bitcoin ATM network with a couple friends, and they had built this up to a thousand thousands of locations, and they eventually uh, sold it off to uh, a Bitcoin Depot, which is a larger ATM network, uh, just last year. 
uh, but we kind of hit it off because I was into crypto and he and he was going to the Miami Bitcoin conference when it was, you know, 35, 45 people. Now it's, you know, 35, 45,000. And so he was connected into that community. Well, what had happened was he was such, he was a big target. So he got sim swapped multiple times. So he solved the problem for himself. Very expensive way to solve it for yourself. And I told him, I want to take this to market. I've never felt this amount of pain in my life. And there has to be, this has to happen to other people. And uh, we changed, the first thing we did was change the name to Afani. And, and uh, we launched about four years and four months ago under the Afani brand. We've been profitable for a while. Uh, we got lucky. So the influencers that you had shown up on your screen. So all of them were customers prior to ever talking about Afani. And oh, a couple interesting. Of, yeah, so like Crypto Casey was a customer of ours for, I'm going to guess like six months. And then she put out a video on, on us. And uh, and and the vi the first video she put out was at, on a Friday at 5.30 p.m. Hmm. And so we were kind of surprised by it. Our phones were going off the hook and, and you know, half the team was ready for happy hour and <sighs> be with her kids for the weekend. <laughs> Like yeah. golf or whatever, and then we ended up working, you know, seven by twenty-four for like the next, you know, ten days. Wow, man, she Charlie has that much. Been, she's got a yeah, large following, I think. I don't know how many, uh, but that's that's amazing. So was that yeah. like the first big push to Ifani getting off the ground, or were you already successful no, before that? So we were already successful. We had already we already had customers. So like Charlie Shrem, it's been a long time. He was one of our early customers. So Charlie Shrem was in the middle of a sim swap, and this was like you know after midnight. This is early morning hours. He's in the and he calls up and he's like, I'm in. I'm getting attacked right now, and so we actually helped him get his mobile number back live from the hacker. And so Charlie Shrem was wow. probably one of the first uh promoters but in the sense of him being a fan of ours and having a close relationship uh with our uh ceo and so charlie was doing it as a fan and he put us uh you know in a couple tweets he tweeted about us and there was no there's no relationship there other than he was a fan and so every once in a while he'll mention us and he's had our ceo on his podcast lately and um you know, Ben Armstrong, uh, well, so, so Ben Armstrong got sim swapped and we had actually reached out to the, his team, you know, six months prior to that and, and a year prior to that. And, and, uh, uh, you know, tried to tell the team that, Hey, you guys might be targets, and, yeah. but they were, they were really more interested in, do you have a token? Do you want to, and so it's like, no, we're trying to like, we, we want to protect, um, but a couple of months ago, Ben Armstrong got hit and i don't want to say too much about it because he's got some thing he's he's got some like um heavy investigations going on sure uh and, and that's it, that's it's, that's tough yeah for him to get sim swapped right now especially yeah yeah so it sounds like he got hit by like an organized uh insiders yeah uh, yeah so there's some things going on there um you know crypto wendy happened to happen to be fairly close, I think, to Ben. Had been on a podcast with him, and so we and he got when he got sim swapped. Then we started. That's when influencers started contacting us, mm. and and so we've got a, you know a number. We've got partnerships with uh, secure phone providers, like with the Above Phone or Copperhead OS, Mark Thirty Seven, to name three of them. They all say the same thing, which is we got a really secure phone. You know these de-googled type. Uh, modified Android phones, and they all say the same thing, which is they're secure until you put a SIM in it, and 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 that's that's the way it is. Once you put a SIM in a phone or or activate an eSIM, then you know it allows hackers to uh, you know take over applications and reset passwords. So we've been very very lucky that we have people actually contacting us saying like like I've been a victim, right, and. Uh, and so now, I really like the idea of making sure that other pe other people aren't victims. Now, let me ask you, what happens when you get SIM swapped? Like, why is this bad? For people that don't yeah, know, so, what happens? I mean, why is this such a big deal? Yeah, so as part of the answer, I want to 
dispel two myths, which is that some people think that to get SIM swapped, you have to physically lose your phone. And, and so I just want to clarify what a SIM swap is. It is a hacker. And I, I don't even like to, like to use the term hacker because that implies that they know how to code. So one of the one of the one of the biggest sim swaps in history was done by a 15 year old kid that stole over 20 million. He, he ended up stealing about 26 million dollars, and he's like 15, 16 years old, no coding, nothing, social, pure social Jesus. engineering. So so what is happening in a sim swap is somebody is convincing your carrier, whether it's an outsider or whether it's a store employee or uh, somebody pretending to be a store employee, doesn't matter. What they're doing is they're convincing the carrier, like Verizon or T-Mobile or Mint Mobile, that I want my account pointed from the SIM card in this phone to the SIM card in this phone. So like, let's say you have an iPhone 11 today and you go to the store and you get an iPhone 12, obviously when you're at that store, they're gonna point your mobile account over to your new, new iPhone 12. So what a SIM swapper is doing is they're basically convincing the carrier to move it to a phone that may be thousands of miles away. Oh, wow. And so one of the myths is, is well, I ha they have to have my physical phone. So, and, and the reality is, is that you could have the most secure phone on the planet the best antivirus, the best VPN. You could keep it in a Faraday bag. You could lock that in a waterproof safe and drop it in South Lake Tahoe. And a SIM swapper doesn't care because he's simply saying, okay, AT&T, point this mobile account over to this SIM card. I ha I'm in Atlanta, point it over to my phone over here. And everything you've invested in your hardware, your software, your virtual VPN becomes completely out of the equation and irrelevant. And so it's really just basically saying, like, point this mobile account over here. So they get access to everything, your entire self. I mean, so besides they, they maybe passwords, which they can hack. Yeah, they, so, they're, so now they have your mobile number, your texting, your data. So now they can, they can and if they've done homework on you prior to this, have your email uh, you don't or your... know somebody's name anymore like if you just know their mobile number you can do a basic look up and you're going to be able to get their name their all their past addresses their past uh jobs they've had you know people kind of forget like everything's tied to your mobile number sure. and then they then they can run an ai search tool on that and uh and then with the AI at this point, they'll be able to find out like emails that you don't you don't even remember you you have that you've stopped using years ago. They can get mm -hmm. landline numbers, mobile numbers, and things that you may not realize are attached to you. Mm -hmm. And so now what they can do is go to the the top ten crypto wallets, top ten crypto accounts, and start entering those email IDs and say forgot password. So that's another thing about sim swapping is mm -hmm. you know people are always told like. You know, make sure you have a really complicated password and you want to have complicated passwords. But again, like a SIM swapper, once if they take over your mobile account, they don't care if your password is password one or if it's the most complex password in the world, because all they're doing is saying forgot password. Right. And they're looking for reactions. So if it's just an SMS, then they own you. They own that account and they'll go in and change your password and change everything about it. Uh, if they get a response back saying, enter your six digit authentication code. Right, you get a text or something. So how does, then they have the yeah, phone, so. So then what they're gonna do is they'll go after your email accounts. They're gonna daisy chain through emails if they can. They're gonna look for uh, notifications in your email. They'll, they'll get into your email and search for Duo, search for Google Authenticator, search for anything. And then they're gonna attempt to try and reset that. So. If a SIM swapper gets a hold of your mobile account, like when you started around a golf or you started a long flight or you're going to bed and they have hours, then they can figure out a way to, to uh, you know, get into your accounts. So a lot of people don't. Well, sorry to interrupt real quick. So if you're on your phone, though, and you're paying attention to it, does that make a difference? Can you see what they're doing or? Um, the only thing you're going to see is that like a no network detected 
signal. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and then there's nothing, you won't see anything. And, and, and part of the problem is you may see it like I did and I'm in the middle of the desert and I couldn't call him for 45 minutes. Right. So I couldn't even get access to a and phone. Maybe so even just, being in the desert, you're like, oh, I have no network anyways, perhaps. But I mean, yeah, that's tough. I mean, you know, another, Another myth is that a lot of people will say like, well, I have a, I do a SIM pin lock on my phone. And so I just want to clarify what that's doing is the SIM pin lock. All that does is it's locking your SIM to that phone. And the only protection it provides is if your phone is stolen and somebody were to pull that SIM out and put it in another phone, it won't work. And that's the only thing that it's doing. So it does not prevent you from a SIM swap because again, if, if somebody points the network of like T-Mobile or Verizon, your account over to a different phone, that SIM pin lock on that phone is completely out of the equation. And so that SIM pin lock has zero value against SIM swaps. It's only meant to ensure that if somebody gets a hold of your physical phone and they pull that SIM out. And so it has zero value on an eSIM because an eSIM you can't pull out anyways. And do, so, you know, are they, uh, do they add like an eSIM or they can just put a SIM card into their phone or, I mean, the, at that point it's essentially their phone. So can you stop them? So what I was going to say earlier, I forgot now I mentioned is if you see that there's no network, right. And you're like under the impression that this might be happening. Can I take my SIM card out? Can I do anything? Turn off the phone, break it in half. I mean, is there anything to be the only, done at that point? The only, the only thing you can do is immediately you need to get to another phone and call your carrier. Uh, I see. And you're going to have to verify. So they're going to think that you're the hacker at first. Uh huh. Because you're calling up at a time when, you know, a move's been made on your account. So you're calling up. So you're going to have to go through, you know, their verification process. And it may be a little bit more stringent than normally. I've seen them so go. I lost my phone, my phone and... Just from losing a phone, trying to get a new one, it was a mess. Like, I had no passport, no ID. I was out of town. I got robbed. And they go through extensive questions, and they they won't give you, a lot of times, the information. Yeah, well, imagine you call in from out of country. You're calling from Vietnam, saying, like, oh, my, you know, my phone's been swapped. And, and uh, you know, so if you're in international travel, it, it's even that more important that you need to protect your mobile account from getting stolen away. And so it's, uh, you know, it's a threat, you know, Bart Stevens, the CEO of blockchain ventures, he got, he got hit last year for 6.3 million. And, uh, so even if you, even if you're on your phone and you get hit, then, you know, how long is it going to take for you to get through your carrier, get through that queue, get verified and what can they do in the meantime? And so a lot of people get lucky. Uh, but there's been different patterns. I, I, when people get SIM swap, you know, it's, it's too late. They call us up and then they're like, okay, now I want protection because now I realize like, what can happen. And so I've heard stories from them saying that somebody uh, pretended to be a T-Mobile employee and were able to call in internal to, to T-Mobile. They somehow got somebody's badge. So they called in under like that person's bad number. Wow. Um, I've had multiple people tell me that they first got a notice on their phone that they were their mobile account was about ready to get switched over to another phone and and to reply to this text if this is you know if you didn't request this and then right at that moment hundreds of texts if not a thousand plus start pouring into their phone and so they're trying to scroll back and they're trying to tell like a coworker or their wife like call the carrier and they can't get back to like reject this uh, and so it's like they, they figure out different ways, like the, the one of the more popular ways that they're doing now. And I I am kind of I was I, I was thinking about putting a video out on this, but I don't want to create another thousand SIM swappers. Right. Uh, but one of the popular methods now is, you know, if you have a if you have somebody that works at like a third party phone store, it's even easier because they can just fake verify you. And, you know, even though they have a camera at their back, they can pretend to like look at a driver's license and um but people will impersonate you go into a store and order a phone and a line off your account then they go home 
and then they call your carrier, they call the 800 number, and they're calling from the line that's now on added, been added to your account. And they say like, oh, I, I got this line yesterday and I bought this phone. And so you're they're calling from a line on your account. So they already think, well, it must be correct. And then they can ask them like, oh, okay, you bought a phone. What's the device ID of that phone? Well, the hacker's got the phone in his hand. And so they actually get verified now. And now they say like, okay, now I want to switch lines. I want my old line to be on the new phone. And so this is what happened to Bart Stevens. And you can Google this and you can, there's articles about how he got hit. And so this has been a popular method uh, for people to get SIM swapped is they end up, you know, the, a lot of times people, the first thing people will tell me is like, yeah, I, I discovered that somebody ordered a phone off my account. And so the only way you would realize it, if 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 you weren't told otherwise, is that um, you got your bill for your from your carrier, you know, a couple of weeks later, and you'd be wondering, like, you know, why is there eleven hundred dollars added to my account? Wow! Yes, yeah, that's who got SIM swapped six point three million dollars in SIM yeah, swap. Yeah, the hackers didn't. Attack. The hackers were gone. That, that got that, they got that from him personally, and then they were going after his business. Uh, crypto ventures and then i guess luckily according to one of the articles that i read is his uh it guy actually discovered somebody poking around and were able to block him out but they were going for a lot more wow that's just incredible i mean so, so you're so you're saying you can drop you can have the most secure vpn and you can have you know i what do i have i have the uh eset you know, on my phone and computer and everything, drop it in the bottom of Lake Tahoe. So, but what makes you guys the ones that are able to be that? So I can drop it and do that and it's safe or not have to do that at all and it's safe. What makes you guys able to protect? In, in general? Yeah, absolutely. Where, you just kind of reminded me. Yeah, you mentioned one of the antivirus companies and you just kind of reminded me to, and, you know, another data point is we actually have a lot of CEOs of cybersecurity companies as customers. And um, and so if you can imagine being a CEO of a cyber a mobile cybersecurity company, like having an app on somebody's phone and the CEO gets SIM swapped and everyone would, would realize that this antivirus or this VPN was, you know, sort of obsolete when this, uh, you know, the SIM swap occurred. Um, now, what makes this different is so so what Afani is based on is that we're set up as a reseller of AT&T and Verizon, but it's much different. So the one of the scary things about the industry is that so a company like Afani and all the other resellers is we have portals into these carriers. And so if you give us a couple pieces of information, we can port your number over to Afani. And and so once you're ported over to Afani, we lock your we lock your account in, and and people will say like, oh, I love your tech, your tech's great, you're so secure, this, you must have the best technology. But the way I describe Afani is that it's actually the opposite of that, where what we have done is we've actually stripped out the technology. Mm. So when we port you over from that point on, everything we do is manual. And and so it's a very expensive way to operate, and so I describe it as being very efficient at running and inefficient way because it's all manual yeah and so the and so the other things that make us different is that let's say you choose the at&t option and you get at&t through afani is that we lock all the at&t employees out we lock all their phone stores out all of the independent retailers that are reselling at&t and other brands um, out of your account and that includes call centers as well so these carriers have multiple call centers in different parts of the world makes it hard to control and a lot of people have access we also remove your personal information so the carrier does not have your personal information oh and the way that funny set up is i don't want to give away too much of the details but our customers are hidden behind a funny as a business and then a funny is hidden behind another business and so the carrier doesn't even know who to call and it's to the point where if you went into an AT&T store and gave them your phone, your passport, driver's license, and said, how much data have I used this month? They'll try and help you. But after a minute or two, they're just going to say, like, we don't know who, who you're supposed to call. You, you must know. 
or you might, are you on your wife's corporate plan or your husband's corporate plan? And maybe you need to call them and it's all by design. So what we're doing is we're eliminating all of the middlemen that can be bribed, mm -hmm. that can be manipulated through social engineering, you know, tricked, that can be part of an organized sort of conspiracy of working with one or two or three other people to do uh, verifications. Like maybe, maybe one of their buddies works at a phone store. Um, and also blocking out like call center people from taking your calls, collecting your verification information, compiling that, and then selling that for, you know, $10 a pop or whatever they sell it for. So we're eliminating all of that. We become your customer support, 7x24, voice messaging, and we provide people with an email address for the non-time sensitive type things. And so we're a carrier. So carriers have done the math, and they figured out that it's much cheaper for them to have this loophole of potentially allowing people to steal mobile accounts away and then deal with it in arbitrage. Mm -hmm. So there's arbit so what the carriers have done if they've slipped in arbitrage clauses. And so you don't know that until you've been sim swapped, then you're forced into going to arbitrage court where you're gonna settle for say thirty to forty cents on the dollar of whatever you got stolen. And then you're gonna have to pay your attorney fees out of that. And that's if it's and it has to be big enough for an attorney to even care about it. So there's a lot of attorneys out there that specialize in SIM swap losses, but unless it's over $50,000, they don't, they won't, they won't take it. Hmm. Now we have a partnership with, as you can imagine, we have a lot of attorneys that call us and say like, Oh, we want to be your you know feeder system. And, and we'll even, you know, pay you part of the fee. And it's like, now nah, we don't, we don't want anything from victims. Like we're my, myself and the CEO are victims. Right. And, uh, and so we actually, have um, you know, in a, um, a set of attorneys that will take a case as low as around seventy five hundred dollars, wow. and they're, they're really the only ones that that we'll work with, just because we want, you know, the every every we want crypto to become right mainstream, right? So we want everybody to try and be protected, right? Um, but yeah, you go, you'll end up in arbitrage court, and I get I've been asked to be an expert witness by attorneys multiple times I was recently asked by an attorney to be an expert witness in eight cases. Wow. He had eight simultaneous cases. And uh, he said that the, the judge doesn't know what a SIM swap is and that the carrier's defense, and all eight of these cases happen to be with the same carrier, the carrier's defense was that SIM swapping is, is normalized in the industry. And therefore they should not be held accountable for something that has that happens to every provider out there. And so he wanted me to be a expert witness because I represent an operator where we've never been sim swapped. Right. Where we can explain why and what we do to defend that, which is that the carriers want to make you leaving really cheap, but with the Fani, what we're doing is making everything manual and we're and we're putting all of our resources on the verification. And so if there's a risky transaction, like somebody calls in, like I've lost my phone or, or a port out, like a port out, we're going through basically 12 steps and it may be 13 if, because in our verification, you can actually out of your own custom stuff. So if you want a passphrase, if you want something like a special email that we have to like email, uh, you know, we're willing, we're willing to customize it. And again, so we're willing to, to do things that make it more expensive to operate. And that's why we're not worried about these carriers ever trying to compete with us because they would become nonprofit if they tried to do what we're doing. And so, uh, cause it's expensive when somebody leaves. So essentially now, once they sign up with you, now they're doing it, you're using either AT&T or Verizon cell towers, correct? Yes. And then, uh, they're not a member of AT&T though, is what you're saying, or they are. So if you're an AT&T, excuse me, AT&T customer right now, and you, and I go to Afani and I sign up, am I still some way attached to AT&T? You're using the AT&T network. Your experience on AT&T is going to be the same coverage, same speed, all of that. But eight, but we'll, we're going to go, we go through a, proprietary process where your data is going to be eliminated 
and it's going to look like you're a brand new account on the AT&T network and AT&T is not going to have your information. Mm. And, and so you no longer pay AT&T anymore. You don't even have to call them and tell them you canceled. You only are paying a Fani. So when you pay a Fani, you're paying a Fani for your uh, voice data text through AT&T or Verizon and you're no longer paying anyone else. And, and for that payment, you're also getting the privacy that we provide, you're getting the security we provide, and you're also getting a $5 million insurance policy that's specific to SIM swap losses as a backup to that. Now, it's our job to make sure that that policy is never utilized. And so, um, you know, we're gonna go through the, you know, the verification process. Um, so we've been, I don't wanna say fortunate, but, you know, we put pr the processes and a team together to make sure that our customers won't get, you know, SIM swapped. What has, um, what has been like, let's see, the, say like in, as far as like market share or competition, do you have, is there anything else, is, are there competitors to what you're doing right now at this time? Yeah. So market share, it's an interesting question. I mean, we're, we're, we're so small compared to like these big carriers that like, we don't, we don't really even worry about market share because we, the way we operate, we can only grow so fast. Sure. So we have to hire ahead of time. We have to have processes ahead of time. And, and so we're very fortunate that the majority of our growth is actually from customers that are asking, Hey, you, you should use this. Uh, you know, or, or like somebody's a victim and they go on Twitter and say, I just got SIM swapped. At this point, there's now going to be anywhere from three to like 10 different customers that may post underneath that saying like, hey, you got to go check out Afani. And so we're very lucky in that sense. And we don't we don't really even think about market share um, in terms of market share for SIM swap protection. As far as we know, we've got 100 percent of that. And so through the last couple of years, there's been two different startups who had built their website and explainer video and, uh, and they, you know, started a market, but they hadn't, they didn't have a product yet. And they wanted to, uh, you know, raise money and they tried to compete, I think really kind of more on price and everything would be like a duplicate. And we were just kind of sitting back thinking like, yeah, good luck competing on price. There's no way you can do SIM swap protection for any cheaper than what we do. Because we know we know what it takes. And, and to qualify for an insurance policy, you have to have these processes, the way you handle data, the way you secure it. You know, we're actually keeping, like we don't collect data on purpose and we're actually keeping data in separate encrypted silos and and we limit it, limit the access to it. And, and so it was kind of like a, okay, good luck. And the only thing that resulted from it is we ended up actually getting a lot of customers from them promoting themselves and then they never launched. Mm. And so, um, you know, helium's trying, you know, helium has announced that, you know, they're doing some things with, with mobile. Now, uh, I will say that the entire mobile industry <clears throat> is attempting like their the main security defense is it is trying to remove cell tower spoofers and that's in a cell tower and that's any independent cell tower uh, that gets in the way because they can become you know data stealers so you know needs to be some further analysis on what they're doing but uh, but we're going after basically like what we would consider to be the important people um, and anyone with crypto so if you're an influencer, it's a no brainer to have a funny. If you're in crypto and you have $10,000 or more and you want to make sure that you're securing that, you probably need a funny. Uh, and, and, you know, a lot of people will say, well, I do, I do hundred percent cold storage. And so cold storage absolutely is like the number one way to secure your crypto. But the fact that you're in crypto is still going to make you an indirect target for them to try and go after crypto. And they may not get be able to get to your crypto, but they may go for your iCloud, your cloud storage, your email, bank account, and go after other things uh, to try and gather your data, sell your data, or harass you, ransom. 
So we get a lot of we get a lot of callers from people who, you know, aren't even in crypto. They've been sim swapped, but they're getting asked to ransom, you know, pay money to get their social media back or. Uh, they got into iCloud and, and they happen to have things in their iCloud that they don't want, or maybe it's a dating app or something and they don't want things to be exposed. And so, um, you know, everybody should just be kind of aware of like how you use your phone, what you're signing up for and how you secure it and the dangers of that. One thing people forget is they'll, they'll, they'll sign up with an app and they'll start out with SMS verification. Then they add an authenticator. So that's another thing. And then they'll add like a YubiKey. And now they think they're secure. Um, but certain apps aren't, you know, they're not all built the same way. So you could actually get SIM swapped and they use that to get into your app. Then they go to your settings. Now that then they remove your YubiKey mm. as, as an option. And so, you know, these are the kind of things that, that can happen in, in the mobile security space. Yeah, uh, you know, and there's and there's also different patterns of what people do that you know I always tell people that um, you know one of the common mistakes is uh, like people will have like an an email they set their iPhone up with or a Gmail account for their Android phone, and then they take that same email and they open up a Coinbase account with it, and and then they use that to like email family and friends and uh, you know so may sign. Websites, you know, a lot of these websites are basically just honeypots, you know, enter your email here and get free access to it. And and once somebody has your email, they can actually go test. Like if they know you're in crypto and they get one of your emails, they can just go to all the crypto exchanges and apps and put put that in and say, forgot password. Mm-hmm. See what kind of reaction you get. Yeah. And, you know, let's, let's say they get asked for an authenticator app. And, you know, now they need, now they know, well, I got to SIM swap this guy uh, or this person. I need to get into their email. I need to get their authenticator app. And if you're a big enough target, then they may go for it. Yeah. If they, if they're, you know, worth it, they might try to go through all the steps. Otherwise go hit an easier target. Probably. Let me ask you a question. I'm curious. Do you think that one, I don't even know if it's possible. Do you think that these big cell phone companies like, T-Mobile, Verizon, AT&T, so on. Do you think that they are working towards a SIM swap protection type of program for their services? Or is that not even possible given the amount of people that work for them and all the technology that they're using? And I mean, is that not their concern? What what are the, maybe, do you have stats on how many SIM swaps happen a year? Like maybe to them it's not worth it. I don't know what... Uh, what you think yeah, that's that. what that's exactly what it is is that they have, one they have just have too many holes you know and there's yeah. people that can you know, hack in there's people you know it's it's a really hard thing to prevent like these mobile accounts you know you can hack into somebody's like t-mobile family plan like their online account you could yeah. mo- you know if you can do that you can modify information and then and then the next day call back in and actually get verified without even social engineering because you've modified the the verification information. And so I think that they, they've done the math, like I said, and they, and they figured out that uh, it's just cheaper to go through arbitration. Now, one of our biggest fans is actually the ex CISO of AT&T. And, and so he had this premise of going to one of the carriers that he was very familiar with and saying like, you know, what you should do is offer a funny so that you so that you don't have liability to go into court now whether anybody buys it or not would be you know probably irrelevant and and his and his thought was that if somebody were to take a carrier to court that that carrier could go into court and say we offered this more expensive option that would have prevented this that would have provided insurance but you chose this lower priced option and therefore you know we're not liable anymore and so, you know, I did respond to that and say that, you know, I've tried that before. And the carrier's response was that if we were to offer a solution that we actually say is more secure and actually insured is that we already claim we're secure. And therefore, uh, it would give the impression that our normal service is not secure and that you'd have to pay more and, and have this third party involved in order to make it secure. So it's kind of a really unique 
position for us that the only way that yeah. they can down is to make it more expensive and everybody else is competing on price. So that's yeah. one thing that we can't do. We can't, you know, we can't, we, we'd love to be able to say like, Hey, we'd love to, we're going to lower our price by 20%, but. Right. Well, I think the know, price is fairly reasonable. It's 99 bucks a month. I pay for two lines, like $240 a month, you know, and I, but you know, also we have like phones and stuff. I have one phone that I'm paying monthly, but um, well, the one thing about our service too is just to, to, so people understand about what our service provides is the $99 is all taxes, all fees, everything that includes voice data tax in US, Canada, Mexico, um, hotspot as well. We also enable the Wi Fi calling and SMS globally. Mm. And what that means is that if you're behind a Wi Fi network anywhere in the world, so this could be on an island off of Thailand or Singapore, or UK. If you're behind Wi-Fi and somebody texts your number or calls you, you're going to receive it. And that's going to be free. You can talk to them for an hour. It's free. And it also means like if you're in a hotel in Singapore behind Wi-Fi, you can text to the U.S. You can call with Wi-Fi calling to the U.S. and it's free. Oh, and so wow. I've, I've been okay. in seven countries myself this year in Qatar Thailand a couple times, Malaysia, Singapore, Vietnam, and I've and I used it, and it and nobody can tell. Nobody, it's everybody. Really? I've never tried. I never really even. It's funny. I've never even really used Wi-Fi calling or even thought about what it was for. It's silly. I never thought about it. But essentially, yeah. I mean, it takes it off the cellular network for one. So it, it it actually takes your call off the cellular network, and and again, so that's why it's oh, important. Like interesting. Avoid, that's avoid true. Hours. So when I can you're... Te technically just turn my data off, my mobile data, connect to Wi-Fi and use Wi-Fi calling and be completely off the network. Yes, you'd be off the cellular network and it would be encrypted. Yeah, it would be encrypted. So, you know, if you, so if you traveled overseas and you need to do verification, like with SMS or something, you know, and you can still do that with the Fani. And then also we throw in international data roaming. Mm. So... What we're what we're trying to do is, and what we've done is, we're offering our complete package, so that when somebody buys us for the right purpose, like if they want SIM swap protection, they want privacy, and they want the insurance, and now they're getting international data roaming. So if you go out overseas, you know, two or three times a year, like our service becomes actually cheaper than like AT and T or Verizon directly, and so we've thrown these things in because we what we want is we want the lowest churn rate in the industry. And that's what we have. Like I, there's gotta be, there can't be any other carrier that's anywhere near our churn rate. So we're, so even, and we don't do contracts. So the typical churn rate for the industry might be around 30%, 35% and ours sure. is less than 1%. Wow. And that's be, and, and that's with no contracts. And, the, and that includes people that move to Europe, move to Asia um, or lost their job you know, that uh, FTX probably, probably the most difficult month for us was because uh, we had a couple customers because our churn rate so low. Like when I say we had a couple customers leave us because uh, they had a bunch of money in FTX and they had all of their crypto in FTX and then went to oh. zero. Oh, my gosh. That's and, uh, you know, and therefore they're like, ah, you know, at this point, I'm going to go get a, a job as an insurance agent try and rebuild myself and uh they're gonna have to go back to you know t-mobile or mint mobile or something so man we, you know, that's we, terrible i just uh, think about that fti I just just like anything like that in general it's just so terrible man people work so hard like i if i you know i just don't even want to imagine if something like that you know because i work so hard to FTX, get to this point you know yeah like but when you think you're about leaving your money on the crypto exchange, though, you're not supposed to do that. So many people still do. Yeah. Like, well, think about that—that that damage to somebody's mentality of the F FTX scandal. It's the same exact thing as a SIM swap, and then you lose your crypto. It's the same. It's like it's devastating. Well, I can tell more. When I, you know? when I say that, I didn't sleep. Like, there's a reason for that. Like, it was, it was mental. Like, I was, I was. Uh, it was mentally exhausting. It was bad. It was that bad because it's like you've been digitally intruded on. You got you got uh, things stolen from you. 
you know, you sit there and wonder like, you know, what information did they, did they steal? Did they get like medical records, tax information? Is this going to be sold on, you know, the dark web? It's like, you don't want this to happen. And, uh, and not. so, so yeah. So when victims call in, like I'm sort of the techie nerd here and, and, uh, and I like to talk to the victims to just, uh, cause I want to see what the patterns are. So a lot of the protection that we put up, a lot of things that we are educating ourselves on or like, what are the different patterns? So we started playing around with AI to understand like where are the AI tools at in terms of personation, voice, uh, video avatars and all of that. So this is all going to be, you know, the AI is going to make things more difficult for cybersecurity. Of course. Uh, you know, and some guy that was really into AI he became a customer of ours. I was talking to him and, you know, and I was like, you know, do you think AI is going to, you know, be a basically become a hacker tool? And he said, why? Well, he's like, I expect at some point you're going to be able to say, like, what's the best way to sim swap this person? Right. And, and AI is going to go and look and see that this person is on T-Mobile. What's the most vulnerable way that T-Mobile has been hacked? It may even go look at like because T-Mobile has been hacked a couple times. So yeah. so last year they hacked. For I was hacked. Million. I'm telling you, I was hacked. I w it was the scariest thing because I literally saw my phone being manipulated. Like I even took out the SIM card. I I must have got a SIM swap. I don't know. I mean, I took out the SIM card. I I um, I mean, I tried everything. I couldn't get I couldn't get in. They were in my phone, um, just like doing like I could see them offloading data and stuff like that. And I didn't know what to do. Like, I couldn't keep it off. I kept turning it off. They kept turning it on. So I just broke the phone in half. And it, it wasn't easy, actually. I have the Flip Fold Z, this one. And literally trying to break this thing in half was almost impossible. I was surprised. But I don't know if that even really helped it, fixed it, or whatnot. But I did end up taking my phone and my computer because it happened to my entire uh, everything. It happened to my phone. My computer, I think it happened through my computer. I don't know if I got SIM swap because my computer happened first, then my phone. Um, my laptop never did, but I took to Best Buy and they said, yeah, you had like a direct attack that they're trying to get information or something. But fortunately for me, I didn't, uh, hopefully to this so far, everything has been okay financially, but you know, I did want to point out on your page, kind of read a couple of things. So it says, uh, FBI reported a 5.67x increase in SIM swap scams as of last year. 80% of the attempts to get into a phone account are successful. That's pretty scary to think about. Hackers can drain your bank account and take over your email, social media for extortion. Tens of thousands of people lose their life savings and reputation every day. Yeah, I could imagine someone going in and just like completely just going in on your socials and just spamming some terrible stuff. You know, so T-Mobile faces. That's what they do. Yeah, they'll, they'll say like, hey, I'm going to tweet out some things that you're. It's going to take you, you know, six months to recover. You can tell people you got, you know, your account stolen away. But yeah, the damage, you know, but they can. You know, ransom it for Bitcoin or something. Yeah, definitely. That's, uh, yeah, people have a lot of personal stuff on their phones. You know, I try to tell people uh, in my community that uh, it's best not to have any wallets or anything uh, as far as anything crypto related on your phone. Uh, I always recommend that. But now, you know, also obviously computers can be hacked. But I think that a phone is easier. I don't know which one's easier, perhaps. I just feel like a phone, if you walk by the wrong network, perhaps, is it true that if I'm connected just like randomly to a, like a Wi-Fi at Starbucks, could that protect me? Like what you guys do? Or I mean, um, or is that able to get SIM? Okay. Does it matter where I'm at when I get SIM swapped? Or could I get SIM swapped from a specific Wi-Fi router that maybe has some, you know, malware set up on it or. Yeah. So, so where you're physically located, irrelevant, you can be anywhere in the, in the world and you can get some swapped. 
Um, but but it's but it is an interesting point about the Wi-Fi. So to give you an example of one of the ways hackers will attempt to try and collect data to later SIM swap is they'll set up a Wi-Fi network with no password and they'll flash it with software where it turns the Wi-Fi router into uh, what, what might be called like an IMSI catcher. Meaning that it's it. And if you walk by it, like and you're let's say you're your phone is set to auto join Wi-Fi. And I always tell people, always turn that auto Wi-Fi, the auto join off, unless it's like to your home network. Mm-hmm. And and so let's say I you say walk the same by. Thing. Yeah, so you walk by and like somebody could have a, it could be an apartment one floor above, you walk, you're walking on the street and they've got a Wi-Fi network that has no password to it and a data collection software flashed on it. And all they need is basically like a half a second for your phone to connect to it. And you walk by you, you have no idea. Now it's what right. it's done is it's like that MZ number of your cell phone. Now, every SIM and every eSIM has an MZ number to it. So if you look at the settings in your phone, you'll see that there's this, you know, long um, uh, set of code for your, your MZ number, for your SIM. Now, what that tells them is the first couple of characters is what country you're from. The, si- the second set of characters is what carrier you're on. And then the last, the, the longer part of it is specific to you. So if somebody walks by, they can see like, oh, this person's from Australia and they use the Telstra network. And so let's say like I wanted to go uh, after a bunch of Bitcoiners. So I could go with an MZ catcher in my backpack and go to the Bitcoin conference where there's 35,000 people. And I walk around and I could collect MZs. And then now I know all these people are here for Bitcoin. Jesus. Crypto. I'm collecting all these MZ numbers. And if I have friends that work at these carriers, I might be able to call them up and just say, hey, like, tell me who this is. And let's, you know, let's do something. Wow, that's now, crazy. Now, if the carrier has your information in an account, they can, they can get your information. They can't do that with a Fani because your account's not going to be sitting in the carrier account. So that's a good example of how we're preventing, you know, data collection on you to prevent them to even attempt to SIM swap you in the future. But Wi-Fi is, Wi-Fi is one of the ways to do it. And then uh, independent cell towers. Well, an MZ catcher is a cell tower spoofer. And at this point, they're like the size of a iPad, mini iPad with a couple, three um, antennas on it. And you just put it in the backpack or, uh, you know, you could park it in the trunk of a car, park, go park that in front of a, an attorney's office. And then you go away and come back at 7 PM when their office is closed, get in your car and drive home and then go see what did my MZ catcher get? Hmm. And it may, it may, you know, collect an awful lot of unencrypted information. Let me ask you this. So as far as crypto and cold storage hardware wallets, like I have a tangent cart. Uh, if someone were to SIM swap me, I mean, I would be under the impression that now when they SIM swap, do they get exactly what my phone looks like? Or are they getting a fresh slate, clean phone without any apps? Or does it come with all the apps that I have already installed on my phone? all the conversations and calls already there, or are they getting a fresh phone? Because say they don't even, maybe they don't know I have a tangent, or maybe they do, but can they even get into my tangent without the card and the code and the seed phrase and all that stuff? I mean, how protected am I on the cold storage front without a funny versus with, is there a difference? Yeah, because so, that, so that's the-, the most important to me because if something happens to my tangent, uh, and if for some reason, like maybe I should ask Tangem this and they'll probably tell me that there's no way that somebody else could get in, but maybe you're telling, maybe they can, like, I don't know, you know, can they, I mean, are you familiar with how Tangem works that, with the card system and the code and all that, or maybe one key or ledger or anything? Have you had people with those, those, uh, accounts, um, SIM swapped and money taken from their cold storage before? Well, I've not had anyone call in and say that, that they've had 
a SIM swap result in cold storage. So cold storage is the best way. Okay. That's the only way to really absolutely lock up your crypto and, and, and everybody should try and do cold storage if they don't yeah. already. Um, you know, the only, I think the only risk really on your, on, you know, cold storage is if let's say you, you store your, like your passphrase, you know, your seed phrase, where somebody if somebody did sim, sim swap you could they use that to access email or a cloud account or something to get like seed phrases of accounts yeah for sure um, now if, if you need like a physical key that's why like i'm a i'm a fan of physical authentication keys i'm a fan of you know ledger and all and those type of devices and uh, that's really the only way to really secure your account 100%. but you know but you will still be a target like if you're an influencer on crypto, if you talk about crypto, if you've told friends and a lot of these, a lot of these SIM swaps, um, you know, everybody kind of suspects that it's somebody that's like, maybe not a, not a friend, but like a friend of a friend that knew, that knew you enough about you that, that knew how you kept your, your, uh, crypto knew that maybe you have a ledger device, but you keep like 20 grand in Coinbase or something for trading and and you know futures and things like that sure uh, but it will make you an indirect target to where maybe they're not going to get your crypto but they get into your bank account your email your your uh icloud things like that yeah that can be very worrisome i mean imagine you know especially you know and this kind of leads into my question you know, as we move into now what's being coming a bull run do you have you seen are there like seasons to this? Like, does this more frequently during a bull market as opposed to a bear market? Like, should people be more on edge now than ever because of the fact, or is it just like, we should all like more, more always be on edge of course. But now that we're running into a bull market, people are going to be getting SIM swap much more often. I'd assume probably. Right. Yeah. I would say that, uh, you know, one of the early initiatives that, that really propelled the funny was the ledger hack. And so the ledger, the ledger hack resulted in their customer database being placed on six different parts of the, the dark web. And then all those people started getting SIM swapped and that's where funny really grew. Now during the first bull run, uh, well, at least the, the bull run in the last four years, yeah. a funny rose with the bull run. And then, and what was interesting is when the crash hit, we then, we, our growth then kind of flatlined. We continued to grow at that, at that pace. And then there was another run up and then our growth accelerated and then it, and then it sort of crashed the the crypto crashed oh. and so we you stayed guys on move the, with the market. Oh, but you stayed so crypto. So, but we're not experiencing the downturns. That's nice. the thing. That's what I see. Anytime I see. we ever had like a little tiny downturn, and that, and when I say tiny, I mean like we're talking like hand, uh, we're talking like five, six, seven people, and that was the FTX, hmm. uh, uh, you know, bankruptcy. And so now again, like with this latest run that Bitcoin's taking and crypto's taking, like we're yeah we're growing, I think above ten percent per month. Okay. And every company out of Silicon Valley, like if we if we went around all the other founders like that, you know, are in Silicon Valley and 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 they're like, oh, how much? What are you growing at? We're like, yeah, we're at 10 percent. Like they would be so like, you know, 10 percent for any kind of business is, you know, massive. And our marketing budget at this point is so ridiculously low. It's almost like it doesn't exist. That's awesome. uh, and we're actually just now starting to to uh, to really kind of officially. Uh, you know, do marketing where, um, you know, technically we don't have to, but, uh, but we are, we are going to be adding some more resources here. And so we're going to, you know, fill the, the empty cycles of the new resources once they're trained and, and increase that. But yeah, every time there's like crypto goes up and everything's being digitized. So, you know, even governments are talking about, you know, digital currency and, and so, all of this is is going in a in a trend that favors what we're doing. Um, now, one thing I would like to tell you, to kind of surprise you here, is that 
Um, we wanted to offer something to your community. What's and that? from the time that we started this is that we actually created a, a uh, crypto danks page. Oh, really? <laughs> let's see if it, let's see if let's it's, see. If it's up and running. So it via just... dot com forward slash crypto danks. <laughs> That's cool. Let's see. Oh, nice. Oh, cool. Thanks, man. That's interesting. And so that literally just popped up, and about five minutes ago, I got, I got the notification. I, I, I asked him like if he could do it, and cool. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be going on air here in like 60 seconds, and if we can get it up. So, um, so what we'd like to offer is your community, as being part of the the Crypto Danks community. This is a $99 off, and if you if you buy the monthly option. Because we don't do contracts, so if you do the monthly option, this, if you go to this landing page, you just close that page out and then hit the Get Secure Safe plan. If you choose the monthly option, then your second month is going to be free. Basically, it's going to apply ninety nine dollars to your second month. Oh, okay. And then, but if you choose the the, the yearly plan, the ninety nine dollars is going to be taken right off the top, and and you can see down it should. Oh yeah, Danks is the so promo code. Their automatic. coupon code Danks, ninety nine dollars. If you choose the annual, then that's going to be nine hundred dollars for the entire year, and that's going to be nine hundred dollars for like AT and T, including international data roaming, our security, our five million dollar insurance policy. Oh and, wow! Uh, Very cool. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. That's really cool. Thank you for that. Yeah. So we like. So we like to to. Uh, you know, offer value to, to communities where they're trying to educate people about how to trade, how to make money, how to survive in this tough time with, you know, interest sure. rates going up and, and uh, insecurities and fiat. And so, you know, we appreciate what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm all about, uh, you know, <clears throat> I call like the motto of the, what I do is crypto truth unveiled and you know, part of the truth is harsh. You know, we deal with a lot of pain in crypto, you know, from so many different angles, you know, and this is just another one. And to be able to help protect anybody from any financial loss, I think is beneficial for everyone, you know, so that's really cool. Um, definitely help let the community know in the discord and Patreon and Anybody who ends up watching this video, you'll be able to go to crypto slash just ifani.com slash crypto tanks and get the code. That's cool. So, okay, so let's get into the lines and how that works. So 99 a month, that's for one line. What's the data like for that? So like for the AT&T option, you get your, it's the data is unlimited, but the priority speed, you get up to 40 gigabits. Okay. Per month. So we're definitely not trying to win people over on uh you know replacing their home wi-fi or trying to like save money uh we don't offer like free hulu or free disney or free netflix because that's data collection sure. and data leakage and privacy issues so we're we're straight up uh voice data tax us canada mexico 40 gigabits on at t then you get the wi-fi calling and sms globally and the international data roaming Okay, I do have a question from uh, the chat. One of my VIP members, actually, Low Key Singularity, he asked, "How much data with Hotspot? How many gigs?" So the Hotspot is uh, there's no there's no sub limit to it. Okay, so, so it's hot, a, you, all the same, forty gigs, whether you use it on Hotspot or whatever. Yeah. Mobile. And on our AT and T option, we also for twenty five dollars more have a hundred gigabit option. Oh, you do? Okay. It's for at and That would be something that I would probably go I just for right, right now, I have T-Mobile, but I was from Sprint from like year, 10 years ago. So I have unlimited uh, data in the U.S. And I also have 100 gigabytes hotspot. Um, so that's my only hang up, you know, is for me, I guess, thinking about it is unlimited data and 100 gigabytes hotspot. But... In reality, I don't use unlimited data. I'm always on my Wi-Fi or probably use maybe 20 or less gigs a month. 
Um, so that's good that you offer the hundred, and that's twenty five bucks a month. And then you can add four lines. It says for eighty nine dollars a month, so each line is eighty nine bucks. Um, or if you can add the twenty five, correct? You do iWatches and iPads, and and those are add ons. So you get activated on on your mobile line first, and then we can add watches and iPads and, and uh, would you know, they got be, them. would they, well, let me ask this. Cause I have a Android watch, which has all the data and stuff, but it's only costing me like $7 a month. Is it going to be like a whole new line where it would be? No, it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be $15 per month. Okay, cool. Even though I use it as a, it has its own, sim i guess maybe it, i can use it as a phone if i left my phone at home or whatnot yeah so you've got you've got the uh the advanced smart watch with its own number yeah cool and then it says 60 day 100 percent money back guarantee so if you're just not happy then money is back in 60 days no problems yep. yeah we're trying to make it as easy as possible to very cool. For somebody to sign up and try it out, and and now it's even better because they're getting the nine, they're getting one of the one of those sixty days, they're getting half that for free. Yeah, and then absolutely. and then also like if you if you were to land on this page and back out and then go to a findy.com, you get zero discount. Right. So you want to make sure you stay. So you want so you want to you want to use this code and and uh, it's good for us. It helps us because we like to understand uh, like which different communities that people would go through and. For sure. Yeah, this is definitely something that I'm happy to represent and offer to my members. Um, anything to protect them. Absolutely. You know, it's terrible on my Discord. We have um, these imitators where they make an account that looks just like mine. It's a new account, but it has my image. It has my name, but it might be tweaked in with like one different letter or a period or... Man, I'll tell you what, I don't know. People, they just, you know, in my community, they've lost some people. They just get, they believe it's me and they, you know, lose their money. There's just so many different ways, man. It's terrible. Uh, one, of the, one of the guys that I talked to, this, this is back three months ago. Um, he, had, he had a really big crypto community. And so he was still on his father's cellular plan. So somebody impersonates his father. At a, at a phone store, gets a phone in the line, goes home, then calls and has the son's phone number switched to the new phone in his hand. And the son is the one that's founder of this crypto company, crypto wow. business. The guy then uses his phone number, takes over x.com. And we're talking tens of thousands of followers. And he and announces that, that they're dropping a new token. Whoa. And people start sending their Ethereum and their Bitcoin or whatever to, to buy this new token. And then when they got enough or when these when they figured out that somebody had sim swapped them, stolen their X.com account, they called X.com, had it shut down. And because it had to do with criminal activity, X.com then suspended their X.com account and oh, wow. shut it down. And so I, I can't tell any more details than that because... I, I don't know what the lawsuits are going to be on this. Cause it's like, do you sue the carrier? Do you sue the business? Do you sue, is X.com going to be caught up in the middle of it? Uh, yeah, that's a tough one. It's, no, it's like this stuff is, uh, it's kind of wild. And, and so that's a case where like they must've known that this person m managed the X.com account. Absolutely. Cause I find it highly unlikely to like be able to like sim swap somebody and then immediately be able to take over the, you know, how would you like kind of figure out like, oh, they're X.com. Like maybe there's something there. Like, like it, you would have to, you would have to sort of plan this out. And um, so that would be a case where I would say that probably somebody knew them well enough to understand that. So, um, it yeah, show, of, it's hard to trust anybody these days. Around yeah. You. Is there anything, uh, probably wrap it up here. It's been, a little over an hour. Is there anything you want to say to the people out there watching or will watch in the future? Yeah, I just be really aware, like be really aware of like all your applications. What what are the authentication 
what are the authentication options and try and use the most advanced, make it hard, right? So if a hacker has a list of a thousand people and they go through a hundred hack them and they get to you and it's very difficult, then, you know, maybe they skip over you and go to the, the next people. Um, you know, just be aware that, you know, like spam messages, like when you get those on your phone and, uh, you know, it could be something as simple as like, Hey, this restaurant's down the street, you should check it out. Or the UPS package is waiting for you click here, or we're going to send it back. You know, that can execute lines of code to, to do things like, um, grab, like that you have an iPhone 11, uh, that it's white, the this is the device ID, this is the MZ number, this is the carrier you're using. And now when they call your carrier and say like, oh, my iPhone 11 got stolen, this is the device ID and the MZ number, the carrier's already gonna think that this has gotta be him. And then they'll say like, oh, okay, what's your six digit password, please? And, oh, I I, it, I stored it on the phone, it got stolen. Then they'll say, okay, great. Well, we'll authenticate you another way. And, you know, of course, then they're going to ask, like, your address, what's your last job? And the, the hacker already has all that. Right. So just be aware of how you're using your phone. Uh, there, there's plenty of videos on settings on your phone, like, that are going to tell you, like, how to use AirDrop properly and iCloud. And just be aware that all these great features that make phones, like, fun and easy and and shareable are also features that hackers can use against you. Like, find my iPhone, for example. Mm. So they can track, you know, they can, if they can get access into your iCloud then they can track you as well as you can track yourself, you know, trying to find, you know, the post office or something. Mm. So just, you know, be aware. And then you don't have to, you know, if you don't buy a Fonny, uh, I, like I, I think I said this earlier, if, if, or at least I said it to somebody earlier in a different call, if you have the, the choice of going to your mobile store in a Porsche or a pickup truck, Go there in a pickup truck because the phone store employees can be the ones that identify you as a target. Mm, if you come in there and you're bragging about crypto or you're driving a Porsche or Mercedes, then, um, you know, when you're going in there and you're like you and you do some sort of interaction where you actually have to give them verification information, you know, they're they're seeing that on the screen. They're listening to it. Yeah. And so just be aware of like how this in, you know, this it's a weird it's the really the only industry where you're giving you know, people like authentication information, like, you know, even like in your bank, you know, there's at least codes you have to put in and, you know, swipe a card, but you're actually handing your phone over and giving them really, your driver's license. It's, it's kind of crazy. It hit home when you said that because I was, uh, I was going to the T-Mobile store like every day while I was getting hacked and trying to figure stuff out. And she was like, you're here like every day, you don't work or anything. I said, yeah, I mean, I own my own business doing crypto and then I started just talking about what I do and it, it's that easy you know and I'm at the T-Mobile store you know given personal I didn't even think about it till now you said it and I'm like whoa like I did talk about crypto and money can be made and you know stuff like that but you know also every single person I meet that wants to get into crypto I want to talk to them about it because I can try to offer my help and have them join the program and stuff like that so it's true though, you gotta be careful who you talk to and, and what you're telling them because you can become a target. <clears throat> um, yep. Well, when I got hit, it took me 90 days to reverse engineer. I had to trick the carrier and uh, I had to trick another third party phone store into giving me a little information on actually which employee did it at what store. And it turned out they're out of Memphis, Tennessee, third party store. And when I confronted the carrier with what I had found out in the end, because they lied to me the whole time, they were under liability protection mode. And and it turned out that it was just a third party minimum wage employee that lied to the computer saying that I was standing there with my driver's license and my passport. Wow. And that's what it took. And I was, I was in uh, California at the time and, uh, you know, or Arizona when I got hit, uh, living in California, but in Arizona when I got hit, and uh, all, all it was, somebody lying to the computer that I was standing there. Jeez. I do have, yeah, that's terrible. Sorry to hear that. Then now, um, Kirk Warner, also a member, he asked, uh, which we do know, he says, ask if they use Verizon also. Thanks. You do offer Verizon, um, correct? We do. 
Yeah. We offer Let's... AT&T and, and Verizon. Those are the only two options. And the only limitation is that on AT&T, we can offer a truly global experience. Like if you want full on cellular texting, everything anywhere around the world, we can, it's $10 per day, just like a normal carrier. You get the data part for free, but then if you want the full experience, uh, but with Verizon, we can't offer the full international cellular experience. So we're negotiating with Verizon. We're trying to improve the offering there. Um, but you, if you don't travel overseas, then yeah, you're fine with Verizon as well. Okay. So do you get U.S., Canada, Mexico, or just U.S.? Yeah, okay. U.S., Canada. Yep. And then the same 40 gigs and then 100 and then with, with, with Verizon, it's 30 gigabits. Okay. And, and and we're trying to, we're negotiating for a better deal. We're trying to get a better deal on both of them, actually. Okay. And there's no upgrade option on Verizon for the gigabit gigabytes. There is no. Yeah. Okay, cool. So Verizon, AT&T, AT&T sounds like a better option uh, as far as what you're offering at the moment. But if you like Verizon, that's available to you as well. I appreciate setting us up in our community with this offer. That's very generous of you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so it's been a pleasure. Um, really getting to know you and you know the world this entire world because it's kind of new to me this you know i've heard about it here and there and i saw it like you know people advertising so that's why i wanted to get you on and talk about it and educate the people out there in my community um about you know ways to protect yourself in this business because that is i mean that's number one like the number one thing you know i tell people like you have to be careful, you know, you never know where, what landmine you're going to step on or, you know, you don't even have to do anything yourself. You know, eventually um, you want to be as protected as you can. So I'm probably looking to make a move over here to a funny myself. Um, yeah, I think most people might be hung up on the fact, oh, they oh on their phone and you know how they would kind of keep you locked in you might you'll probably have to pay off and get settled with your current company like me i'm with t-mobile um but once you pay off your phone then they'll unlock it for you and you can have uh that capability to go to any carrier so uh, that, at least that's how i understand it correct that is correct yes yeah your phone has to be paid off they, they finance the phones just to lock you in Right, right, for sure. Okay, well, I appreciate it, Mark. Um, yeah, it's uh, very interesting. Very glad that we were able to cover this and talk about it and expose the people out there to what's going on and, and uh, how to be careful. So thanks for your time, and I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I wish all of you the best of luck in uh, making money in crypto, because if you're making money in crypto, it probably means I am. <laughs> and, uh, uh, let's go kick some ass in the in, in crypto and make some money. Absolutely. Now's the best chance that we all have. So let's take advantage of it and uh, see what happens and where we're headed in the next year. This is exciting. The first time that uh, we get to front run Wall Street. <laughs> I know. It's kind of crazy how yeah. that is. Yeah. There's plenty of ETFs that are going to be coming out. Yeah. Uh, you know, people are leaving firms as a customer if they can't get an ETF, a Bitcoin yeah. ETF. You know, so so they're all going to be sort of forced into this. So it's going to be we're what we're crazy. this is history. Yeah. Like we're watching history being made, and several, you know, crypto is just one of those. I mean, there's history in more ways than one, but yeah, we're watching a big part of history take place right now live. So yeah, appreciate it and make money at the same time. Absolutely. We'll do our best. You be careful out there, everyone. And uh, thanks again, Mark. And um, thanks, everyone, for watching. Check out the uh, website that we just got. I'll put the link in the description now. And uh, thanks again. Appreciate your time, Mark. Yep.